ان الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه وتعالى ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله سبحانه وتعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير ليس لنا رب سواه ولا نعبد الا اياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون ونشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الغمه وتركها على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين يقول المولى عز وجل في كتابه العظيم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد ما دي براذر اند سيسترز ان اسلام ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار نعوذ بالله سبحانه وتعالى من النار My dear brothers and sisters in Islam If we understand the seerah of all the prophets and the last prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and we have to understand the seerah very well from the seerah of all the prophets and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam followed by the companions, it will guide us for so many good things in our life. Without the seerah, we cannot survive. We never grow up like that as a human being. We learn from our parents, our relatives, our scholars, and we take them as our guidance. But imagine the good leaders is the prophets and the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last one. When you look at the people in Palestine today and how they start fighting with the people of Bani Israel among the disbelievers because none of all of them is against us. Some of them be helping the Muslims. As they said it, they said the best time the Jewish people used to live in Palestine at the time of Umar radiallahu anhu arda. So they need to live together in the peace because the land is belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُورِثُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ He give the land for who he like it subhanahu wa ta'ala from his servant. So the whole earth is belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the people dividing the land for their own benefits. What happened years ago when you see the young kids in Palestine fighting with the disbelievers, they got the rope and they put the stone, they turn it and they throw it in them. From where they learn it? Do you know who's the one, the first one who started? You prophet Dawood alayhi salam. Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salam, he was a young man among 10 children and his father, at this time, there are fight between Talut and Galut. That's why we said we need to read the history, the story of all the prophets. And then his father sent him over to look at his two other brothers because they are fighting with Talut against Galut. So when he went there, he was a young man, but he was very clever by putting the stone in the rope and throw it. And when he went there, Galut was a huge, strong man. And he was asking Talut, I need someone to come and fight with me. But everybody's scared. You need a huge body and a big, massive guy, strong, and who's gonna fight with him? Then he went to Talut and he said, what is the price if I fight with him? So look at him as a young man. They say, the price of what? If I give you the mulk, I give you some really good things, and you marry one of my girls, my daughters. 
So he went to fight with Galut. And Galut made fun of him. Come on, young man, go away. Say, no, I fight with you. So he did the robe with the stone throat on him. He killed him right away. So Talut, how he's going to let his young man marry from his daughter? So he make an exception. If you have to want to marry my daughter, then you have to go and fight in the mountain with another people who's against me. So he did, and he killed them, and he marries his daughter. So the Philistine kids, they learn from the Sirah. So they didn't get just like that. They learned it from Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salam. We're not talking about Sayyidina Dawood because he was in Palestine, but we talk about the seerah of the prophets sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions to learn what we have to do in our life. Among the believers, Sayyidina Amr ibn Abdullah. Sayyidina Amr ibn Abdullah, one of the people who entered the Islam earlier when he was 38 years old. And from the first eight people who converted to the Islam. And his name, Amr, but he took his grandfather's name, so they call him Abi Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. Ibn Abi Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. That's when you see the first time person today, the one who's covered his name, Abi Ubaidah. So Abi Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, he was very close friend to Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu arda. And he said he is a similar in his shape as Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Skinny man, skinny face, not so many meat, and he has no big body, but he's tall. But when Sayyidina Abu Bakr invited him to the Islam, right away he accepted. But Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loved him so much. Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha wa arda, when they asked her about Rasulullah, what did he say about the companions who he loved most? He said, the first one I love most is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, then Umar ibn al-Khattab, then Abi Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. And he gave him the name Amin Hadi al Ummah, the security, the honors, the honor of the Ummah of Muhammad. He was a very smart person, has wisdom, everybody respects him, he's very honest and honored. Sayyidina Umar while he's meeting with the companions and asking them, what do you like? Some people said, I like a lot of gold so I can donate it and they give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some said, I need a silver and I give it for, but they looking to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they come the turn to Sayyidina Umar, they say, Wallahi, I wish I have a house full of men like Abu Abayd ibn al-Jarrah. Imagine how important this man in our life and we don't know the story. Sayyidina Abu Abayt ibn al-Jarrah, he attended all the battles with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he died at the time of Umar sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he attended all the wars. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the battle of Uhud, when they hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the baton that hurt Rasulullah, he went by his teeth and he took it out and he broke his four teeth in the front. And as the scholar said, anyone lost the front teeth, they scared to smile so people cannot see their face. Except Abi Awaid ibn al-Jarrah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his face much better looking when he's smiling when he lost his teeth. The people of Nagaran from Yemen, they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they don't like to get a war. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, you pay fidya, you pay money or the war? But after the negotiation with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, we believe in Isa, and now he said Isa, he come from only a, a lady, Maryam. This is wrong. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, if you don't believe in that, what about Adam alayhi salam? Allah created him from mud, from dirt. 
and from him he created Hawa. So if you believe in that, how you don't believe that Isa alayhi salam from a lady only, no a man? Negotiation Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was reciting Quran and then he was praying and he watching him and that sajda time, he did sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the sajda, and then he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy anyone who don't believe in Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. People of Jaran get scared and afraid from that. And they said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, can you send someone honest, honor, can help us, come with us over there and explain more? So he said, I give you the best one, who is Abi Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah. So he went to the Yemen with them. Not too long, they all returned to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a Muslims, converted to the Islam because of this man. So he was very honest and they care about the akhirah more than the dunya. When Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu arda take off the khilafah, not the khilafah, the leadership from Sayyidina Khalid ibn al-Walid because Khalid ibn al-Walid never lost any war. And the Umar radiallahu anhu, he was afraid that Sayyidina Khalid taking his attention, he's the top of everything, so he take him a little bit out and he sent Sayyidina Abi Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah to lead a sham. Sham is Syria and Jordan, Lebanon, and part of Saudi Arabia. So he sent him over there to taking care of the war. But he was very honest when he went there. But Omar radiallahu as a leader, he always go and check if he put the people in the right place or no. So he went to visit Sayyidina Abi Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah and he insists to go to his house to look what he has. And he refused. Are you going to go and watch me say, I like to. But because Omar insists, they went to his house and then he looked at his house and say, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, you are Amir. What is it? You have no pillow, you have nothing, you have empty room what is it where is the money i give you every year to taking care of yourself and your raya he said there's so many people in need more than me and he looked at him and he said okay let's get some food so he bring for him piece of bread and some olive oil and he said this is the food i have omar started crying when he see amir live this life while today we all are witness how those people live in the earth the wealthy people the omara the kings how they live how much security they have what kind of food they eat even we see them they have cars covered by gold they live their life they eat with a fork and knife and a spoon made from gold while abu Ubaid ibn al-jarrah he cared about the akhirah, not the dunya. He was cared about it. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him to, sell, to help Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As and he saw go help him because he need help. He cannot fight by himself. He went there with his group of people to fight and Sayyidina Amr say to him, you under me. He said, no, you have your own people and I have my own people. I lead my own people, you lead your own. That can tell you who he is. And Sayyidina Amr, he insists to be the leader. And he looked at him with a smiling face. And he said, if you don't like that, I will be under you. That is fine. See how he is. Very humble person. When we look at his story, in Ilazakiya, in Syria, when he fighting with the Roman, and then they have a door, gates, no one can cross this gate. No one cross this gate. I'm gonna take you from there to understand what is the first time people do and from where they learn. Why you are sleeping, we don't know the seer of our prophets and the companions. When this gate is so huge, they cannot open it. 
he come with an idea to dig a hole at night all over the bowl and deep so nobody can see them. And the following night, the soldier with Abi Ubaidah, they went there and the hiding. When the people look and there's no one around, they open the gate and the Muslim, they jump on him and they open the Lazakiyah. Do you know why today the first time people have tunnels? They learn from Sayyidina Abi Ubaidah the Jarrah. They learn and they read, understand the seerah of the companions. But when Omar asked him about his life, he said, I don't like to die and the Baitul Maqdis under the disbelievers. He opened Baitul Maqdis when he finished Allah's Qiyah and he went to Baitul Maqdis in Palestine and the people know who he is. He is not a scary person. He is not afraid from anything. He likes to get Shahada. They all asked him, you want to come and open? It's fine, but don't fight. But we need Omar come by himself and sign the contract. They open under the Islamic law. He sent a message to Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu wa arda. He said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, they like to be in peace, no fighting, but you have to come. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda, he went there. And he signed. But before he signed, that Philistine would be under the Islamic law. He said to everyone, you don't cut any trees. You don't kill any elder. You don't kill children. You don't destroy church. This is the Islamic law done by Omar ibn al-Khattab. As they said, the Jewish people, the best time they live in peace in the time of Omar radiallahu anhu arda. Today, we look and we see our brothers and sisters and the children in Gaza being killed no support no help from our leaders the Muslim leaders those what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them in the Holy Quran وَلْيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ نَافَقُوا وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ نُقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَوْ ادْفَعُوا قالوا لو نعلم قتالا لاتبعناكم. They ask them to come and help. They are hypocrites. Come and help and support. Or give some money. Help with the money. Get help with what we have equipment today. They don't support them with, with anything. Even they block the border from cross the food. And today we see so many organizations they open to, for their own benefit to support the brother and sisters in Palestine. Completely wrong. I said it and people got upset from me. I know people from inside Gaza. Nothing reached there. If you like to help and support, wait until this war ended. Then you will know that exactly the money will reach there. So many trucks by the border cannot even cross inside. So from who you give the money today? Qalu. لو نعلم قتالا لاتبعناكم If we know this a real war will follow you Allah described them in the Holy Quran هم للكفر يومئذ أقرب منهم للإيمان They are getting closer to the kufr more than the belief يقولون بأفواههم ما ليس في قلوبهم والله أعلم بما يكتمون They say so by their own tongue but whatever inside their heart is different, Allah is no better. الَّذِينَ قَالُوا لِإِخْوَانِهُمْ وَقَعَدُوا لَوْ أَطَاعُونَ مَا قُتِلُوا They said, if these people of Hamas people or whatever, if they listen to us, if they think, they talk and we negotiate together, we not see this number of people get killed. Allah described these people, the hypocrites in the Quran. قُلْ فَدْرَأُوا الْمَوْتَ عَنْ أَنفُسْكُمْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you think these people die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrong, then protect yourself from the death. 
Take the death away from yourself. You cannot. ولا تحسب أن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون. Don't think they get killed. They are alive in the for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The land of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They are happy by the way they they die in the state of the Islam as the murderers. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is great, and we ask Him Subhanahu wa Taala to support them. As the people watching, and they cannot do anything. I say this and I pray for the Lord and for you and for your family. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Abu Abayd ibn al-Jarrah, he died when the contagious disease over there, the black, attacked the Syria. And Sayyidina Umar رضي الله عنه وارضاه asked him to leave. He refused because he believed as the time will come, Allah will take the soul no matter what. We need to understand his story and the seerah of the Sahaba and the companions. Because today, we care about the dunya much. As the Prophet said, the whole nation will be against you. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we're going to be a small number. He said, no, but kathir, you are a lot. But you care about the dunya, not the akhirah. You prepare for the dunya, not for the akhirah. We care about the money and the dunya. We live in life today. We shout at each other, scaring each other, backbiting each other, hate each other, no relation inside the family. We hate each other badly. Money come inside the us, between us and destroyed all of us. We don't think the right way. We think you're gonna live forever in this dunya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is mata'ah, it's just enjoyable. But the real life, when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you let the people go between two places, Jannah or the hellfire or the Billah, so Jannah has to be our place, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, today when we see the people over there and the people from the own Jewish people talk, they said, if we know that will happen, we'll never fight with the Muslim people. They're very honest. They treat us very well. Only few, the Sahayna, they think the whole Arab country is their land. They are dreams. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got his words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the end of this dunya, you're going to see everything is talking to fight against the Jewish people. Sayantuku shajara wal hajar. The stone will talk. The tree will talk. They said behind me one Jew is going to kill him. Except one tree will never talk against them. Al Gharda. And they believe in that. And this tree, today, they destroy our olive tree. And they just plant Al Gharda tree. So they know the time will come. Allah will take them by the Muslim people. When the stone will talk and the tree will talk, please read an advice. We're getting closer for the Christmas and the new year. Need our children to understand the seerah of the prophets. Isa alayhi salam, time to discuss with our children. Before they being heard from the school different stories, it's our duties. And to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this time just to help and support all our Muslims, the whole world, and support our brothers and sisters in Palestine and to accept their murders. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide them by the food and the water, which you are cannot get it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soft the heart of our leaders to help our brother in Gaza and support them. اللهم اغفر لنا الذنوب وكفر عنا السيئات اللهم اشف مرضانا ارحم موتانا يا رحمن يا رحيم تقبل دعاءنا يا رحمن يا رحيم اغفر ذنوبنا ارزقنا شربة ماء من يد رسولك الكريم لا نظما بعدها أبدا 
يا ربنا نسالك الجنه ونعيمها ونعوذ بك من النار وشرورها نسالك يا ربنا الا تقبض ارواحنا والا ان تراد عنا يا كريم اللهم ارض عنا يا كريم اللهم ارض عنا يا كريم اللهم بدل سيئاتنا حسنات يا رب لا تقبض ارواحنا الا وان تراد عنا واجعل اخر كلماتنا في هذه الدنيا لا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله عباد الله رحمني ورحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وانهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله العلي العظيم واذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم واقم الصلاه